literally come into work pinching myself thinking that I am in the dream job of all dream jobs because our next guest, well, there's just nothing that he can't do. He's an actor, an author, a 16-time winning WWE World Champion. He's adding superhero to his resume of esteemed acting. I think he's an incredible comedian as well. And his new HBO Max show, The Peacemaker, is about to drop. Take a look. Why are you in your costume? <laughs> costume. This is a uniform. And it's brand new, so I gotta stretch it out, make it more comfortable before we go on a mission. Maybe I'm stupid, but why would you even want to wear that on a mission? A bright red shirt and white pants aren't exactly conducive to lurking in the shadows. People see this uniform and strikes fear in their hearts. What people? The other people at the village people tryouts? <laughs> Can we sit? Can we talk? Can we sit and talk? I would love to sit and talk. Um, thank you for everything that you do. I, I always thought when I was a kid, I looked at other people in the same job force that I was in, and I always admired the ones where I'm like, I don't know if they're dramatic. I don't know if they're a comedian. I don't know if they're this or they're that. Like every person that I admire most taught me to have range and that range was one of the greatest art forms that we could have because you never really knew where someone was coming from, which was not only exciting, but meant that they could diversify their portfolio. Mm. And that is you to a T. Yeah. <laughs> It's too, true. Too kind. Thank you very much. She's way, way too kind. So, uh, thank you. Um, that's, that is, uh, that's, that's very nice of you to say. I'm, I'm uh, still very much in the learning process of all this, but uh, a lot of the comedy, especially with me being a big lumbering individual, is not taking myself too seriously and being able to laugh at myself. Coming on a television show dressed as Peacemaker. <laughs> Is my, my, my stylist has, uh, I've, she fired me. <laughs> and, and she's my wife. So uh, <laughs> trouble at the workplace. But anyway, um, here I am dressed as a superhero and uh, we got a show out on HBO Max and to say I'm not nervous is a bold faced lie. I'm so glad you <laughs> said that because I'm nervous at work all the yeah, time. Yeah, but that's okay. I think, uh, I think if you get to that point, where you're not nervous. You, you talk to any athlete who takes the field before a game. If they get to that point where they lose that edge, uh, even as a live performer, man, I've, I've gone down that ramp way too many times. <laughs> but every single time, there's that moment right before you pull the curtain back. You just, it's a, it's a feeling, an indescribable feeling of everything at peak insanity. And then you go out, and it's amazing. Even when it's the, the long nights where you suck. It's amazing. Um, but there's not a night, there's not a time, there's not a time that I've ever walked around that door that I'm not nervous. I don't think you, I, I do think you know how valuable that is. That's helping me right now because I'm scared in this job all the time. I am, I, I, I try to be a journalist. I've never been a talk show host before. I'm dealing with broadcast in a digital age. There is everything yeah. that I'm trying to figure out on the job sometimes, and that just made me feel less alone. I think you're doing great as a talk show host. I think you're doing great as a journalist. That means so much to me, coming from you. You're such a good person. <laughs> now, I love the fact that you have had many jobs, including being a groundskeeper at a golf course and an ice cream like scooper, but one of my favorites is that you were a limo driver. I was. So I was about uh, 19. This was pre-GPS. You still had to buy a map. I grew up in the small town of West Newbury, Massachusetts, yep. which is 1,500 people strong. And it is one hour and uh, 30 minutes north of Boston. I'd never been to the city in my entire life. 
I was given a job driving Lincoln Town Cars to and from Logan Airport, a place I'd never been to in my life. <laughs> I also was 225 pounds by the time I was 19 years old. And I was uh, training for a bodybuilding competition at the time, so I brought my food in the car. Uh, my Lincoln Town car smelled of steamed chicken breast and tuna fish. <laughs> so uh, I was always late, and I mean late. I would pick people up two and a half hours late for their flight. Yeah. Uh, I earned every single expletive that I was called. <laughs> and See, I got I a hand to the passengers. They came up with some new stuff I'd never even heard. And I grew up with four brothers. All right. So I love that I read that you like doing interviews because you think it gives you a chance to, like, let people in on you. Is this true? Well, uh, there's, there's a lot of reasons I like doing interviews. Uh, first of all, it's part of the process. Yes. And uh, we also have to get people interested. You can have the best performance in the world. If nobody knows about it, nobody's going to go see it. Then you can't do it again. And you're making what's called a home video. Like, <laughs> I, 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 I want people to come see. And, and a lot of that is, is spreading the word, letting people know Peacemaker's on HBO Max. So you guys go and see it so I can be Peacemaker again. Uh, and and that, this, is, this is part of that. Thank you very much. So Having one person seen it, says, you guys are going <laughs> to love it. It's so good. I am loving it so much, and we're actually gonna get into, if you don't mind, I'd like to try and do some peacekeeping, peacemaking with you. We are, I think we're gonna try to make some Yeah, peace, right? we're gonna make some peace. Yeah, um, totally actually. not qualified, but I'm into it. You know what, let's do it right now. Okay, cool. All right, so we have a mom and a daughter, Eliana and Anunziata, and uh, we were wondering what your conflict is, and John and I are gonna attempt, he's gonna take the lead. And again. I am totally not qualified. This is just my personal opinion with no backing whatsoever. But I'm no, going to do my best. I would love to ask, what is your conflict? So our little conflict, um, my mom and I are super close. We're, we've been like really close ever since I was little. Um, and I'm 19, so I'm in college now. I go to school in Missouri. But the, the issue here is that my mom she, she's very Italian, and she loves being part of every little aspect of my life and knowing all the details. Um, but as an adult now, um, I want some more privacy, especially like in my dating life and things like that. How, how do we navigate that kind of situation? Yeah. I, 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 heard, um, I heard your opinion. Any, anything to add over there? <laughs> and then, Fiata, yeah. do you have something to say? I just worry about anything and everything. I don't... I don't know what's out there. I, I, I just worry about anything and everything. So um, I just want to, you know, make sure she's good and she's safe and kind of want to know what her daily life is like. But First of all, in no way, shape, or form am I a parent, but I am a child. Uh, and I've found my best connection with my parents is uh, transferring that um, parent-child relationship into a, a peer-adult relationship. And maybe it's time for you as a daughter to begin approaching conversation to your mom uh, about adult subjects or just w the, the yearning to wanting to be treated as an adult, not a child. And maybe it's time for you as a mom uh, to think about, you know, as, as your daughter gets older, more educated, wiser to the ways of the world, uh, how you want to go about redefining your relationship so you don't look at her as a child, an incapable child, when she's desiring freedom and maybe you both evolve in a way where you can grow as mother and daughter together, um, but as two adults, your adult relationship with your daughter is gonna be a whole lot la longer than the childhood one. Right. And, and for, for me personally, this didn't happen at 19. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, that's when I, I was very rebellious to my parents at that point because I really thought they were, um, they were just trying to protect me, right. but I thought they were, they were trying to hold me back. Mm -hmm. So when I say I've, I've developed a strong relationship, this is, this is just fairly recently, last decade or so. So maybe just start planting the seeds now for that foundation of uh, your future relationship where you're, you're two adults who can, who can uh, share the magic of adult life. <laughs> okay, um, is there another show that you and I are supposed to be in together where we fully do like relationship? human interest, like... I'm having a blast. Okay, well, let, let's go to commercial and then just get right back into this conversation, if you don't mind. We'll be right back, everybody. <laughs>